Hello out there, Grandmistress of Shadow Style JR here, and it's time for another Tabletop Tales of a sort. Uh, see, one thing that I like to do a lot is what I call concept builds. I like to do uh, things where I just take stuff that I know about or stuff that I'm interested in and make D&D characters out of them. Why? Because I can. And as we speak, today is, on for the recording, Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. And today is the day that we found out that in what is currently the upcoming Pokemon games, Pokemon Sword and Shield, specifically Pokemon Sword, something people have been waiting for, for years now, is finally upon us. Finally getting this boy. An evolution to Farfetch'd, called Surfetch'd. And as you can see, he's a very knightly sort of a duck. He's got a shield, which clearly is the top frond of the leak. Got a giant lance that looks like a leak fighting type. And I look at that, you know what I think? I think I can make that a D&D character. So I did. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the level 3 Aarakocra Fighter, Surfetched. Uh, as you can see, fairly strong in Strength and Dexterity, 14 and 17 respectively. Pretty good constitution, 13, nothing to sneeze at. Fairly charismatic, because even though Farfetch'd was not useless for years on end, people still love the little duck, so, you know, charisma. Uh, neutral Wisdom. And not that bright. Now, obviously, this is a fighter build. If you interpret Sir Fesh as more of a paladin kind of type, obviously you'd want to backload wisdom and charisma a little bit more. But this is specifically a fighter build. So he's not super fast, 25 foot walking speed, as opposed to the usual default of 30. But he's a small guy. He's Legs aren't that long. Uh, but he's got a fair amount of hit points. 25, good for 3rd level. 18 armor class, spectacular for 3rd level. Uh, plus 3 to initiative. So, at least he gets the jump on people. Strength, uh, as far as saving throws, in strength and constitution. Though, again, dexterity is nothing to sneeze at. But the real meat of this is in... Well, it's in how he's built. So, as previously mentioned, you can see that he's got a lance here and he's got a shield. To me, that says Duelist Fighter. So I gave him the Champion Combat style, and specific, I gave him uh, the Champion Martial Archetype, rather, and the Dueling Fighting style. So when you adopt... So, uh, when you're holding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two to damage rolls with that weapon. In one hand and with no other weapons is the key thing here, because per the website here, the weapon that Surfetched uses is a lance. Now, technically, in D&D, lances have a special quality that says the only time that you can wield them one-handed is when you're mounted. You will notice Surfetched is not riding on any kind of other creature, Pokemon, or other ones. You will notice that Surfetched is on its own two feet. Well, I found a way to fix that, and it's in his equipment. I with the help of some people on the DNB Beyond uh, Discord, thank you all, came up with the Lance of Sir Allium of Porum. Some of you are going to be culinary geeks and will get that joke. Others of you won't, and I encourage you to Google what the Latin name of a leak is. So, it is a lance, and like I said, normally lances you can only use one-handed if you're mounted. This one, however, is a lot lighter than a normal lance. 
Lances normally come in at six pounds. This one comes in at four. Why? A, it's magical, and B, it's made of a lighter metal. So, as a part of its special properties, it may be wielded with a shield if you're not mounted on a vehicle or creature. Also, as a magical weapon, it has a plus one bonus to attack and damage, which is always nice to have. And, to reflect surfetched fighting type, it does double and damage to earth elementals, basically taking care of earth elementals thunder weakness, although thunder in D&D and thunder in Pokemon are very different things. And half damage to air elementals, because fighting is weak to flying type, i.e. air. Now, because I wanted to make this a legendary weapon, and because it is the Lance of Seralium, I did add in a few flavor things to, you know, make it just a little more special for my Surfetched. So, again, I came up with, uh, with the help of the aforementioned D&D Beyond Discord, I came up with a little bit of a backstory for this weapon. Uh, as you can see, if you use this as, as a GM, there's certain DCs that you can use to give additional information to your players about this weapon, where it came from, and maybe kind of put a little hook in them for additional adventure. Uh, for instance, DC-10. You find out a little bit about Sorrel, you know, which is good because you need to attune to this weapon over a short rest by meditating on the legacy of Seralium of Porum. DC-15, you find out about his coat of arm, arms, and this is my favorite part, someone actually suggest this in the D&D Discord, and I put this in as an additional story, um, that uh, his coat of arms is that of a white duck bearing a shield and a leak, and I came up with the reason that the duck is wearing the leak is because of a legend, legend, unconfirmed myth about him, that states that he once fended off an army of skeletons while wielding only a single stalk of a leek. Uh, D&D, &D, uh, if you take a history check and get 20 on it, uh, then you get the legend that Lance may have been created by his goddess, Shantaea in this case, herself. And there's also that little hook that I mentioned in there about his body and the crypt and the temple attached to it having been lost to the ages. Maybe there's some devotees of Shantaea in your area that kind of interested in finding stuff out, trying to, you know, bring his body home, as it were. And if you do that, you know, you can find out additional information, again, from places like the Golden Fields Abbey outside of Red Larch and the Forgotten Realms, uh, setting, which is dedicated to the goddess Shantaea as well as the god Lathander. So, you can send them there for more inf information, or if they, you know, they get their DC-20 history and they're like, wow, this sounds really cool, I want to go find out more about this guy, or I want to go help track this guy down, you've got information here that you can use to point them there in that direction. And it also... Aside from that, because it's a magical weapon, and because it is specifically for Surfetched, I wanted to do something that mirrored the upcoming move of Surfetched, named Meteor Assault. Now, Meteor Assault is kind of like a, a Hyper Beam style move, or, or a, a Giga Impact style move, in which you attack, and then have to rest for a bit, or charge, and then attack. Those kind of moves in Pokemon are usually pretty powerful. Now, some of the higher level spells that involve Thunder are... I had to make sure my stuff was still playing. Are either not exclusively Thunder damage, or they are just way too OP for a magical weapon of this level. So what I did instead was I gave it a single charge of Shatter. Shatter is one of the archetypal thunder spells in D&D &D 5e. 
What it does is it creates a sudden, loud, ringing no noise centered on the point. In this case, the point of contact between the lance and your target. You can choose to expend this charge whenever you come in contact, and it just sends 3d8 thunder damage straight in. They don't save for half, it just goes straight in. But there is an additional effect on that charge in that uh, when you have the Sir the Lance of Sir Allium, uh, you can make a DC 13 uh, save on their strength save. If you make that, you're still standing. If you don't, you're not prone. So obviously I've limited that to a single charge that can be regained on a long rest, so it's basically a once a day thing, much like how Per the information from the Pokemon website, Meteor Assault, you can use it, but you've got to rest for a while afterwards. Now, obviously, basically once a day is a lot longer of a rest than use it for a turn, wait for a turn. But it still kind of gets the idea that this is something you're going to want to hold off to the point where you're just really wanting to get that extra damage on there. Or maybe you're going up against something incorporeal like a ghost, or maybe you're going up again against an earth elemental, which are weak to thunder. If you've got like this really big, huge earth elemental and you, your party's having trouble with it, but you've got the Lance of Seralium as a paladin or a fighter, you can step up, s take a jab at him from five feet away because lances have reach, And then, at that point of contact, say, like, a single word of power, and shatter. And it just... <laughs> and because it's an Earth Elemental, it, it, it's weak, and it takes double damage from the attack. If you've got a campaign that's got a lot of Earth Elementals, this is a weapon you might want to consider maybe possibly giving to your people. And again, referencing the people on the D&D Discord who helped me out, one of them said that they have a game that is centered around legends of great warriors from the past, and this is a kind of weapon that fits in great for them. Which is why I created it, also because it goes along with Sir Fetched here. So, and with this, you can kind of see how my mind works when I do uh, custom characters like this, when I do things that are uh, concept builds. I try to think as much as possible about what I can do with the mechanics that I have that will make you think, oh, it's just like that thing. Uh, I've done this before in the past in another life with like Autobots. Uh, well, actually, that was a Predacon slash Maximal, but never mind. I've done it with Jedi. I've done it with Super Sentai characters. And now, I'm doing it with a Pokemon. Sir Farfetch. Sir Fetched. Level 3 Hour Coke Refiner. So, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll check out the rest on the channel. Maybe subscribe, you know, get that bell for notifications. All those other annoying things that you have to do now because YouTube won't let you find videos otherwise. And until next time, I'm the Grand Mistress of Shadow Style. Later, y'all.